So right after you install Betaflight 4.4.2 and you calibrate your accelerometer, that's the first thing you have to do. Then you can go to your ports. If you have the default configuration, then GPS is on UART 1. You just set it here, set baud rate. You don't need to touch anything else. <coughs> UART 2, in my case, is the uh, transmitter in ELRS. And all you have to do is just press serial RX on whatever UART is plugged into. Um, if you have troubles finding which UART it is, it'll say TX or RX. In this case, it's a uh, receiver, so it would say RX and then a number, so we just turn that on. If you have the default VTX configuration, it's on TX3, so UART3, and we simply just set, in this case, the default one is a TBS Smart Audio, so we just set that. If you want to have your Bluetooth working, you have to turn this on, and you have to set it to this baud rate. It has to be this or else it won't work. By, on the default firmware, this is set to 8 kilohertz. Um, I set it lower just because I wanted more CPU power. I'm not sure if it matters. I heard that F4 controllers can only handle 4 kilohertz anyways, so... Yeah, there's no borrow meters. We have that off. Accelerometer has to be on. If your flight controller is in default configuration, you should probably set it to this. Otherwise, when you arm the drone it'll just take off and flip over because it won't know which way is left or right so that's the default orientation of the flight controller is 270 degrees uh, if you want your LED strip to work it turn that on uh, you'll have to run some CLI I didn't even bother getting it working or testing it I'm sure it does work though GPS is a little bit uh, funky. You have to have it set to U-Blocks, which is what it is. It's a U-Blocks M80. Auto bot on, auto config off. Before it would show like Galileo. You want it to not show that. You want it to look like this. And even without the battery plugged in, it, you should still have it working. Also, if you have the GPS on the back of your drone, you should take it off and put it on the front. It's just tape it on there. The VTX it like confuses it or blocks it or something. The second you move it away from the VTX, the GPS works fine. So, yeah. Uh, carrying on power and battery and figure it out yourself. In my case, the scale 99 will bring my battery to exactly what it is. 14.8 uh, volts. And it'll show up as 14.8 volts. Obviously, you have to have the battery plugged in to do this. And in my case, I'm using Lyons 18650s, four of them in a little pack. So I can drop to 2.5. Yours will probably be like 3.2 at the lowest or 3.5. I'm not sure. And then it'll be like 4.1 or 4.3 full. It'll you'll you'll have to figure it out. You just take the amount of cells and divide it by the whole voltage of the pack. So like. A fifth or a fourteen point eight volt pack. You divide by four because it's a four S, and now you got three point seven. Anyways, you have to figure that out yourself on what packs you bought. If you bought the same packs I did, a fourteen point eight volt Lion three thousand milliamp hour, then go ahead steal these settings. It works good. There's no current meter. You have to set it to virtual. Um fail safe you can set this up better I haven't figured out what my hover throttle is or any of that so I haven't configured GPS rescue but you can set it up pretty easily the preset I set was the Superfly FPV freestyle 7 inch it works pretty good and then I went to PID tuning filter settings this is just basic filters uh, you could use the ones that come in the Supa Fly, but this is what I have it set to right now. You'll notice that throttle boost is not set at the default 5 because it's too hard to control for what I'm using it for. I like 1. 
it's still got plenty of kick to it even with one so you may have to set your cell count here if it's wrong uh, mine was thinking it was a 5s pack so I went to CLI and stuck in the code to set it to 4s you can google the code pretty easily uh, dynamic idle value because in motors we've updated to blue J and can now use bi-directional D shot if you're using the default ESC controller firmware didn't update it then you'll be able to use D shot 600 and this will be set off I would set it to like a default idle of four to eight percent and if you update your firmwares on your ESCs to Blue J, then you can use bidirectional D shot, and the max you'll be able to use is D shot 300. There's 14 motor poles on the default ones. Yeah, we. Th I was recommended with seven inch to have 22, but it was just way too high. 15 feels way better to me, but it's whatever your preference is really. Obviously, it's, it's set to serial UART uh, crossfire because it's a ELRS I'm using. Uh, before I had this on, I'm not sure. You could probably set this better, but it, it worked completely fine for me with this off. I still get all my telemetry data, so maybe it's because of the way my controller is set up. But yeah, it, it depends on what you, receiver you're using anyways. Smoothing I have pretty high, 45, because I'm just kind of flying around really high and just looking at stuff. I'm not racing, so I don't need a... It'll, it'll make your controls smoother. I also have a slight amount of jitter. My receiver, when it's connected to my controller, will jitter between 1498 to 1502. So I just set 5 and that evens it out. So it's not slightly drifting. So I could take my hands off the controls without it very slowly veering away. Uh, mode's pretty obvious. Uh, arm has to be set to aux one, I believe. Um, set to the high point. You have to set in mixes on your controller. You set each mix is a channel. So like mix one will be aux one, channel one, and you set it to one of your switches. And then, since I have mine set up to a two-way switch, either it's on or it's in the off position, then off is down here, which would be disarmed, and then when it's up here, it arms it. And angle mode is... You can't do flips or anything. It's stabilized. Horizon, you could do flips. It is also stabilized. And then the third position, this is aux 2 on a three-way switch and the final position would just set it to acro mode because then it would not ha if it doesn't have a position set for a mode then it goes to acro mode in which case you would have no stability you would be flying 100% yourself I have a beeper set up to my aux 3 middle position has nothing bottom positions LEDs on top positions beeper haven't tested if the LED works with my configuration yet but I'm pretty sure it does um, my extra switch, I set up a VTX pit mode in case I need to turn it down or something. Who knows why? It's just good to have. You never know you're flying near someone or you start causing interference for somebody. You can turn it off immediately. Uh, no adjustments, no servos. You can see the GPS on the front actually gets six satellites and this is inside. Nowhere near a window, so speaks for itself. I believe I had to, after flashing Blue Jay to my ESCs, I had to set them to reversed for some reason. By default, they're reversed, I guess. So here it says a straight motor direction, but inside the firmware for the ESCs, they are reversed. You'll have to figure that out on your own. Uh, On-screen display. I believe on auto, when it was set to auto, GPS information wouldn't show up on the screen. It took me hours to figure out. I think I had to set it to PAL. E either one of these will work. I get better quality with the default camera on PAL. 
Uh, anything else important here? Not really. This is all up to you. VTX channel. It's nice to be able to see and make sure that your VTX is on the right power level. Uh, one thing we'll talk about in a second is on the default VTX table, you have to have your battery plugged in before you come here or else none of this will save. The same is true with the OSD. None of this will save if you don't have the battery in before you get here. So make sure you plug your battery in before you plug it into your computer or before you open up Bluetooth, I guess, to connect. If you're powering it by a USB for whatever reason. You have to put a frequency in here. So I put 5800 megahertz, which is uh, band F and channel 4 for my pit mode frequency. It's nice to have this on. I have it off just for troubleshooting because if you have this on and it's in pit mode when it's unarmed, so you might turn on your drone and think, oh, it's not on the right power level. It's showing 200 or 25, even though you have it set to 800. So that's something to keep in mind. So I have it off so I know when I turn it on, it's disarmed. That's on 800. Because sometimes it'll stick to like 200 and you have to come back here and set it. It's uh, kind of weird about that. But yeah, you have to put 5800 in here. If you don't and you just save like this with a zero, this won't work. It'll say 800, but it will not be giving you 800. So you have to make sure you set a pit mode frequency. Now let's go check out Blue Jay quickly. Oh right, you have to have beta flight closed to be able to connect to it. So let's close that out. And now we should be able to connect to our ESCs. First thing you're going to have to do is read your settings. In my case, I've already flashed Blue J. All you have to do is press flash all the ESCs. It'll go through each one of your four ESCs and flash Blue J, which you'll select. You keep this the same. Select Blue J. 48 kilohertz for the door one. I tried 24, it didn't work. So if you want to go ahead, go ahead. But 48 worked for me. I had to set my ESCs to reverse for them to work the right direction. Don't know why. And these are what I set for my parameters. Now, the reason for flashing Blue J is because you get this. This whole list of, well, really, you could make your own and upload them. These are RTTSs, I think. It's a format that they used to use for old ringtones on old cell phones. So, for instance, we could take the Zelda theme song. And this is using each of the ESCs to play one of them. Never heard the Blue Jay default. That's pretty cool. Thank you. 
oh my god, I have to put this one. So you just press accept on, e on each of the ones you want on the ESCs, because, I mean, technically you could put different ones on the different ESCs. I don't know why you'd want to. Maybe if you made your own custom theme, I don't know. But anyways, then you press right. And I believe after we write settings, that's it. And now the next time you unplug your drone and plug it in, you'll be playing the Pokemon Thief song. <laughs>